this is the Lotus Evija or Evia or I don't know how you pronounce it but it's E-V-I-J-A and apparently if you flip it around it looks like a live Lotus Alive okay whatever so the name is Evija or Evia and this is a hypercar a hypercar that is made fully of carbon fiber it's a wholly carbon fiber top and it is uh, supposed to have all-wheel drive now we don't know whether the car will have two motors or four motors According to Lotus, the Evija will generate 2,000 horsepower, making it one of the most powerful production car in the world. With all that power, this car will be able to accelerate to 100 km per hour in under 3 seconds and we expect it's going to be the low twos. Uh, it will also be able to accelerate to 300 km per hour in under 10 seconds. It's, it can be done in 9 seconds according to Lotus and it will have a top speed of more than 200 miles per hour. How far more? Above 200 miles, we are not sure. But now, given that this car is uh, quite lightweight, uh, the carbon fiber tub and um, the combination of battery and motor uh, weighs about 1.6 tons apparently. Uh, this is because Lotus has made the decision to compromise it on the battery size. They're using a 70 kilowatt battery rather than the 100 or more or bigger battery size that other car um, companies might use for their electric supercar or high performance car. So this has given them a weight advantage. So with, uh, with, with only 1.6 tons and 1,900 horsepower, that gives it a, a better power to weight ratio than even the Bugatti Chiron. So we are expecting great things out of this car. The good thing about, about Lotus being under Geely uh, and Volvo, together with Volvo under Geely, is that they have now access to a lot of Chinese uh, electric car technology. And let's face it, the Chinese have the best electric car technology right now. Then among those technology that is being developed and uh, that we are hearing out of China is their reach charging uh, capabilities. So one of the key features of the electric drive system is the very fast charging. It has a, apparently it's going to use a supercharger that will be capable of pumping in 350 kilowatts into the battery and the battery is only 70 kilowatts. So uh, if you work out the maths, it should be able to charge uh, the whole thing in under 20 minutes. Apparently Lotus says it's 18 minutes. And given that the range of the car is about 400 plus kilometers, this is going to be a very fast charging hypercar which makes it probably one of the most practical hypercars there. Uh, in fact, that, that hypercharger, if it goes out and, and you can start charging uh, normal cars in under 20 minutes, then this could actually make electric uh, cars even more accessible to the general public. And when we look on the inside, the design of the inside, it is showing a lot of um, bare um, very racing like racing car like interior where you can see uh, what they've done is create uh, like a tubular uh, interior where you can see the components of the car well it's not tubular actually it's just the carbon fibers but it's empty and it just lo looks like tubes so and, and and also looks like triangles and space frame uh, effect so that that helps to make the car a little bit more interesting we are also, of course, very happy that Lotus is developing this hypercar because the hypercar route, is, I think, is the most sensible one for Lotus, especially if they're doing an electric hypercar because they have all the access to the technology and, of course, Geely's money. And maybe they're getting a lot of help from Volvo as well in terms of engineering manpower and, you know, the muscle to engineer this car into existence. And uh, this is the most sensible way because uh, Lotus is actually a brand name that needs an injection or a boost in terms of its image, in terms of its prestige. And the hypercar route is the easiest way to do it if you have the engineering expertise and the money uh, because then you don't need to produce so many cars and, and, and you can... Um, uh, the development cost for a hypercar is probably a lot cheaper than producing a mass market like SUV or a sedan. So this is going to be very a good move, a good move for for Lotus, and um, and of course they are now uh, able to rely on a lot of uh, manufacturing capacity of capability at Geely, and that should help them to be able to produce this car quite quite uh, quickly and quite well. And and we hope that uh, this will then uh, help them to do, then promote the brand because they are also producing what from what we hear SUVs and also a sedan and those cars will need uh, a lot more uh, brand power for them to sell in numbers uh, we can see that how uh, Lamborghini has been successful with the Urus and of course you can see that Porsche with the Panamera and, and Aston Martin with the Rapide and their four-door cars and all that kind of thing is going to help uh, Lotus uh, become 
uh, profitable and sustainable manufacturer, which is a good thing because Lotus has a lot of expertise in terms of its um, right and handling capabilities. And of course, the brand itself is a, it's a very historic brand. It's, it's a very emotional brand and we are, we are happy to see it uh, prosper. Of course, we are also very happy because uh, Lotus is partly owned by Malaysians like Mota Al Bukhari and uh, his, his partner is, of course, Geely. Uh, the best of luck to Lotus and we hope this car will come uh, into reality very soon and we'll get a chance to drive it. If you like this video, please uh, like and uh, share it with your friends and of course subscribe to our channel and press the bell button so that you'll get a notification the moment we upload a new video. See you again next time.